Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is an unboxing and full review of the Verizon version of the Sony Xperia Z2. So let's open up the box. Now this comes in at $499 with a two-year contract or $599 outright. So it's a pretty good deal if you were to buy it outright or with contract. And it's claimed to be a waterproof, super thin or thinnest tablet and lightest tablet. So we'll take a look at this in just a moment, but this is the tablet. And inside, not a whole lot going on. We have a USB connector. Let's open this up here. We have USB to micro USB. And then we have the wall adapter, which is Sony branding here and USB on the bottom. Underneath here, probably just have some documentation. You can see we have get to know your tablet global support information, important consumer information, product safety and warranty information. We'll set this aside and this is an LTE tablet so it's got the SIM pre-installed as it says here and let's pull this out of here. So this is a super super thin tablet. It comes in at 15.49 ounces so just under a pound. It's extremely thin. It's 0.25 inches thin. As you can see right here we'll take a little bit closer look at that in a moment now this is a little bit higher resolution than a 1080p display it is 1920 by 1200 so it's slightly higher it's a 10.1 inch diagonal screen it has some pretty good specs it runs google's android 4.4 kitkat has a 2.3 gigahertz qualcomm quad core cpu with an adreno 330 gpu again it's supposed to be waterproof and dustproof and this is incredibly thin. So if you can see on the top here, we have a little slot here for the SIM card and SD card slot. And this just opens like this. So you can see there's a SIM card in there. You've got micro SD expandable up to 64 gigabytes. It has 16 gigabytes internal storage, along with three gigabytes of RAM that I forgot to mention earlier. Nothing under this flap. Let's move this away and close that. On the top, we have an IR blaster. We have a microphone. And around this side, you won't see anything there. On the bottom, we've got pin adapters or pogo pins for if, if you get the dock accessory. We also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this side. I just hit the power button right here and you've got volume. And the tablet's turning on. It has very thick bezels and I've seen that before where the bezels are thick but it's a good place for your thumbs to sit as well. So some people may like that, some might not. So we'll wait for this to prepare our tablet and we'll take a little bit closer look at the back. So on the back, you've got the Verizon branding and you can see Xperia from Sony. You've got NFC up in this corner and then you have an eight megapixel camera or 8.1 megapixel camera here. And on the front, you also have an eight point or a 2.2 megapixel camera rather on the front. So it's telling you to close the covers to secure waterproofing. We'll say, don't tell me again, and we'll select the language. You can see tablet activation, set up Wi-Fi, and this is incredibly thin. It actually has some flex to it, but it's incredibly light too. It's, it's unbelievable how light it is actually. I've put in my password, we'll hit connect. And we'll hit next. And we have email accounts. We'll set those up later. And we'll say no for now. We don't need to use that. We'll say not now. We'll just get through the setup and hit no. Here you can see Sony Entertainment Network. And with Sony Network, you can discover all sorts of things. We'll just say get started. And maybe we can go back, sign in later. And we just want to see the boot up screen. So now we've boot up. It's a pretty reflective tablet. I kind of like the bezels because your thumb's not covering over the top. You can see we'll scroll through. Go into the app drawer. And you can see there's a little sidebar that pulls out here. And you can search your apps. You can uninstall. You can put them in your own order. You can put them alphabetically, sort by most used, installed, Play Store, and Sony Select. Hit agree. And 
and you can see some Sony Select apps. Now this is supposed to have a really large battery, 6,000 milliamp hour batteries, that's good for about 13 hours according to Sony. So if we go back home, tap and hold the home button, we've got Google Plus, or Google Now rather, and we go to the upper left, and we'll go right to Sony's Entertainment Hub. So you can see you can enjoy the, the best music, and you've got everything here that's new. Yeah, it's not doing what I thought it would do. There we go. And we've got all sorts of new things here. We can go back to the left. You can see the nice background moving behind it as well. Now we do have some pre-installed applications here. We have Sketch, Calendar, Office Suite, Xperia Lounge, and all the Verizon things, Redbox Instant. And it's telling you, you can see the background's kind of interactive as I'm swiping with it. It's got a nice little effect, and it's really hard to stress how thin and light this is. So you can see it's just, it's incredible. You feel like you're going to break it, and it's incredibly light. It's, it's hard to think that a tablet's this light, and it feels lighter than an iPad Air. So that's, that's pretty interesting and quite the achievement, I would say. You can see there's a Sony widget on the home screen, and you've got your Chrome browser and Play Store. You've got the Walkman. They're still keeping that name around, Album, Movies, PlayStation camera and email. Let's go into the applications and you can see these are all the pre-installed applications. So we have alarm clock and albums, all of these different things, many that you would expect such as Hangouts and YouTube and other things along those lines. If we pull down from the top, we've got our notifications as you would expect. We can edit these and we can actually tell it we might want a little bit extra things in here. Maybe we want mobile data traffic and uh, maybe we'll throw NFC in there and battery life, and then we can go back and those things will be in here as well. So you've got a few little options there. If we go into settings, you can see we have typical settings, and this reminds me a little bit of Android Honeycomb, and it's it looks nice. It's really well organized, but you can definitely see that Sony's had some influence on this. So you have airplane mode. You also have your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage, Xperia connectivity, which has one touch setup, throw settings, which is wirelessly play your content to your Xperia on other devices. So maybe you have another device that runs this. You can throw your information to it. You can use it as a wireless controller, use it with mirror link, and you have some USB connectivity as well. If we go to more, You'll see we have airplane mode and NFC, a couple other options that you normally see when you go to more on an Android device. We can also personalize the device by going here. You can see we've got Xperia themes and we'll take a look at that. They've got some different themes, the air theme, which is purple, earth, heat, silk, sunny, and vintage. We'll leave it on sunny and take a look at that. We'll apply it. Go back home and now we've got the sunny theme. So. Pretty nice there as well. We'll go back to settings and we'll go back down. You'll see personalization again and you've got some other settings as well. You've got some sound settings. Now one thing this is supposed to have is surround sound audio. So you've got high high res audio via USB. You can play high resolution audio and you've got notification sounds, other different things. But this actual device plays surround sound for audio. So that's a nice little feature as well. We also have some display options, tap to wake up, a lot of different little options. And then we can go into storage options and you can see this has 32 gigabytes. I misspoke earlier, I said 16. This device has 32 and again, that's expandable additionally with an SD card up to 64 gigabytes. You can also put an external USB storage device on it, which would be really nice as well. We can also check out battery. Under battery, you've got stamina mode to kind of help you get the longest life out of your battery. And there's different indicators as well. Application manager, just like you'd expect, there's some things that are running. We'll go back. Location, security, language and input, backup and reset. Those are pretty standard. And then you have a couple different things on the bottom as well. So we can go to about, and again, this should be running 4.4. And there might be an update that probably is not at this time to 4.4.4. We'll check for it though. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll have an update. If not, that's okay. It says it's up to date. 
So if we go back home, we've got the application manager and we've got a couple of different options here as well. We can close all, swipe them off the screen, and then we have some options down here on the bottom to throw up some different windows as well. So you've got this nice little option. Maybe you want to put this window up here and they each have their own little functions. We can resize them. There we go. It wasn't responding. And we can search for a URL. We can go to my website here. And we can have the browser open. So we can have multiple windows open. Go back here and open this up. Set the time. Now we've got both windows. And there we go. We've got all these different windows. We'll set the time now. Just hit done and OK. We'll close those out. Let's go back here and we'll open this one. And you can see we have a quick calculator. And finally, we have a screen capture app. So we move this around, capture screen. Now we have a capture of the screen and our picture. So it's really nice as well. So you've got these really nice little options and things do seem to be fast on this tablet. So Sony really hasn't skimped in the way of specs just to get the super lightweight and thinness. Under the camera options, if we go into camera, we do have a few options. We can go into the plus button here. Let's turn the camera and you'll see we have some different effects. We have manual and background defocus and creative effects, time shift bursts, social live, so you can share your experience with your friends live on Facebook. And we have sweep panorama. We'll just keep it on superior auto. We'll grab a phone here from behind, place it under there, and we'll snap a picture right here. And we'll take a look at that picture. We'll open it with photos and you can see, let me turn the brightness back up here. And you can see there's the photo. Now it is a little bit dark out there and it's got a little weird effect and you see what's happening there. And I don't know if it's because of the bright lights, but it's definitely not something I'd expect. See, it just gets light and dark again. But if we take another photo, again of the LG G3, it recognizes it's on macro and there's a little bit of a pink hue in the middle and I've seen that on other cameras sometimes as well. And you can see it just darkened again. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but it's kind of a little bug to note. But it's got some pretty good detail. You can see some of the metal rings where it was machined on the G3. So pretty good detail there from the camera. There is a forward facing camera as well. So overall, it's a nice tablet. Now, one thing to protect your tablet, obviously this is super thin. Verizon sent along the Incipio for Xperia Z2 tablet. This is actually $40, so pretty expensive, uh, but it's a leather case. So I guess it's not too expensive compared to others in its class. So it says it's micro suede inside, has a buckle closure, and let's open it up. Here's the actual case, and you probably want one just to keep it thin and light and protected. So it's a nice thin case as well. It's got a cutout for the camera. Now I do like to use a tablet without anything on it, but it's gonna be tough with this one being how thin and light it is. And there you have it. So this particular case, uh, well, I don't have it on all the way. I've snapped the case all the way around. It keeps it nice and thin. It's really not much thicker than the case itself or than the tablet itself. So pretty nice there. It's got cutouts all around it as well for all the different openings and a little leather strap on the back, keeps it closed and safe. And then you can use it as a stand as well. So just something they sent along that uh, Verizon sent. You can put this in the strap in the back and then use it like this. So pretty nice on the lock screen. You can see swipe up as well. And it's really nice overall. It's a pretty impressive tablet. Given that its size is so small, but it still gets tremendous battery life, it's really definitely something to take a look at. It's comparable in price to an iPad. In fact, a 32 gigabyte iPad Air is the exact same price. So it's definitely worth taking a look at, and Sony kind of nailed the mark as far as that goes here. So if you like Android and it's something that you wanted a really thin tablet and you don't mind the thick bezels, it's definitely worth taking a look. 
Let me know what you think about this tablet in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.